What's going on, people? It's the General Kelly All Star, of course, the host of One Extra's rap show. Now, it's 50 years of hip hop. As you know, over here at the BBC, I'm kind of that guy when it comes to this hip hop thing now. And um, what I wanted to do that's different this time around is showcase not just hip hop in its entirety, but the sounds that inspired me, that helped me fall in love with the rap game just in general in the UK and that's helped push me to this seat that I'm in right now. So I said, how can we make this iconic? Yeah, I could easily do like a, a countdown or something about like all of the old school, greatest of all time, hip hop tracks, blah, blah, blah. But nah, I wanted to make it special and I wanted to focus on the UK. Now, 20 years of this album, I was 10 when this album came out just to put things in perspective. I wasn't even allowed to listen to this album. But the man behind this album is right here. And I just want to chop it up with him. We have no script, just off the cuff. I'm just going to speak from, from a fan to an artist. And I hope you guys take it in and enjoy this journey because you have definitely heard at least one track from this iconic Boy in the Corner album. Dizzy Rascal's here. What's going on, my brother? Come on, you right? Come on, man. So like I said, bro, I just want to just have an off-the-cuff conversation because, like I was saying, I was 10 when this album first came out. And one of the first tracks I heard off this album, mm. like, there's actually a funny story. So initially, in Lewisham, the track that had all the council estates buzzing, especially my one, was I Love You, of course. Like, that was just the one that, just the beat, everything about that tune in particular had everyone buzzing. But... I remember when I had got, I'm sorry about this, but I got a, a, a bootleg copy of your album and I couldn't afford to go to the record shops. So I wanted a man in the estate. Bro, actually, I just want to say I'm sorry. Fam, I've had one I, of my good friends, yeah, <laughs> come to me with a boy in the corner album, yeah. I said, oh, this, I need you to sign this for my brother. I said, yeah, so he gave it to me. It was a blank CD, bro. Yeah, it's a bootleg. With, with the album on it. Yeah, of course, like, obviously. And I signed it still. Yeah, but I, don't, I couldn't go to the record shop. I was 10. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, one of the men on the ends had, had the plug. today. You couldn't just go on a Spotify. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can now, though. You can, yeah, yes. You can, so yeah. don't, like, yeah, 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 like yeah, do it the proper way. And um, there was a track that I was playing now. Um, I think it was called uh, Seems To Be It. I know it was called right, Seems right. To Be That. So my mum's come into the room and she's thinking, what's this? So like, I'm I'm playing the album. Yeah. Seems To Be comes on. And obviously the intro alone oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. kind of raw. Yeah. So my mum comes in and is like, what is this that you're listening to? <laughs> and she's going mad. When I tell you, she grabs that CD <laughs> and confiscates the CD. Confiscation. Bruv. Yo, it's like man. just swearing all of this that like, vulgar language and but what was so beautiful about that was I was other all my other friends had similar stories, but they kept playing that project because it represented what was going on in the hood. Like this this kid from East London, like one of us is out here making music that represents us. When you're doing a project like Boy in a Corner, of course you never think a kid from East London would have an iconic project that in 20 years' time right. we're still talking about as if it's like one of the greatest projects of all times because it is. What do you? What is your thought process making this project? Is did you just want to make something just for the hood, something for yourself, or did you have an idea that this was gonna push? Boundaries. I was just experimenting. So I was on Pirate Radio, emceeing, doing the raves and all that as well. So I, a lot of the beats I was making around that time, instrumentals, were, going, were to take to the raves and to the to the stations for the man them to just butt up and that. So every, it, it was always centred around like the hood. Mm. But um, when, once I got in the studio, the kind of sounds and everything I was going for wasn't like regular stuff that the, the hood was listening to because uh, but it just within grime anyway was just a bit different to even garage everything was all kind of still based off like drum and bass ish bass lines and jungle bass lines that was because I started off like that when I was even younger but um sound wise I was just experimenting and just on some something else and I just wanted to make an album that would kind of stand up with the albums that I liked like as far as structure so all eyes on me, Tupac, or 
Jay Z's album, or Snoop's album, or Nas' album, or even even Ludacris, Busta Rhymes, Eminem at that time, like multiple albums, Project Pat, but obviously not sound like that. But my, my yeah, my main audience that I would have been that it would have been for would have been like it's like where we're from. So like so that like, say like I I used to go to Deptford Youth Club like so I was around your way. Then just before I Love You come out, I was around Essentials and you know, Remmer and all that. You know what I'm saying? So, so that would make sense and, and, as and to and why that would be a record that's always getting played around that area because I was there. It was around. Yeah, Remmer. so all around London. So it was like so the same thing. I would be in Tottenham or I'd be like around Hackney or Newham or whatever. Like just just all over because it's, it's like it becomes a London thing, especially because all the different pirate radio stations will cover different ends and then yeah. going around the country and that so it, it was but very very london centered at the time yeah. originally i wonder how you get from your influences being hip-hop maybe some of the uk stuff jungle and that yeah but then the beats you were making mm. didn't have that kind of influence Not in them how do you get experimental with that being the, your influence and then that, the product that you came up with sounded like this. Now I'm older, yeah. Now I understand that I didn't, I, I didn't know how to make that stuff. Like, so I didn't, I, now I'm old enough to know the equipment they were using. I didn't have the samplers or the certain, to make jungle or even garage. I just didn't really know how to do that. What I knew how to make was to, how to make something that I like. And it, it, like um, production wise, I was really into Neptunes, Timberland, and I'd say um, DJ Paul, Juicy J, like that kind of thing, and and some of the No Limit stuff. Yeah, okay, a lot of the Southern influence. Yeah, and where especially with the Neptune stuff, it was all quite. Um, there wasn't it wasn't always so musical. So imagine when Grinding came out, like there was hardly anything in it. Mm. So that that was Very the music. Minimal. Minimal. That's it. Yeah. That so that feels, felt like wow, I can make stuff like this in my own kind of way, mixed with like I said, my influences were. Jungle, bit of dancehall, R and B, a bit you wouldn't think it about that. Um, yeah, garage, crunk, and grunge, heavy metal. Those were like right. that's what I was into. And what was you producing on them times? Is it a free thing? Nah, um, so rapid and that rapid with a um, so rough squad. They were using fruity loops and all that. They, they I, I knew about them using it before I heard about Metro. Or any of them using it? Wow. They were using it first when it was called Fruity Loops. That's called FL Studio. If anyone don't know. By the time I learned on Cubase in school. That's why I was oh, making my first beat. Yeah, so one of one of the song one of the songs has been added to Boy in the Corner now. It's called Ready for War. I made that in school on Cubase. That's why when, when I was like fifteen. But um, Boy in the Corner would have been made on Logic with different like few few samplers, certain keyboards, uh, certain modules and mm. stuff like that. I wasn't like as over like knowledgeable about the equipment at the time. I just knew that like, lay the sounds across the keyboard and I'll make it happen. And who taught you? I taught my. In, I taught my you know, it's crazy. In school, yeah, they tried to teach me like the um, was like coffee, tea, lemonade, like the way to learn music. That, properly, yeah, the like, proper way. I couldn't do yeah. it. I couldn't get my head around. Like I couldn't read the notes. I couldn't do it. But I could. I could fuck around on the drums. Yeah. Like even if, if they give me a guitar thing to play or like in a school band thing or whatever, I could like have a go. But once they put me in front of that, like laptop or so it's not a laptop in front yeah. of the computer, computer yeah. um, this isn't my my second secondary school i went to a few secondary school my second secondary school that's where i got introduced to cubase and yeah. the computer that's where i learned it and then when i went to my third secondary school i just knew what i was doing i just needed time leave me alone let me go and do what i'm doing and this, if it wasn't for that there would have been no ready for war which led on to another track i got called crime which when i was like i didn't know it by the time i was like building my sound and by the time I love you came out. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, we're here now. You know what I mean? It's, in, it's interesting because I used to think, listening to you, Dizzy, that you made your own productions and rapped, obviously, sort of spat on your own productions. Right. Maybe because you might not have been rocking with the productions that were already out there in the scene. Now, that's just an assumption from like from me. But, of course, I've heard you jump on. Mm. I've heard you go on sets on exactly, Deja yeah. and, and all of that. But I honestly feel like Dizzy Rascal became that guy when he had the ability to go and make a beat that would be on a gram set, mm. then spit on that beat. Yeah. But then make his own music and just put it out. Like, I, I wonder where that transition comes from being a producer, 
or was it simultaneous or did you start making beats first then you jumped on the mic started DJing started DJing Jungle Jungle that's, that's, like a lot of, that's the story with a lot of guys that uh, from the like obviously I don't want to say the grand background because it's nah, deeper but, than well, that so, but. so Target remember Target Wiley thing that's, that's all like yeah. older words for me from my yeah. area so Target is from my estate so I used to go to Target's house and buy records from him mm. I, used to just, I just rocked up at his house and I used to go and jam with them he introduced me to Wiley so so I would be at his house buy records and then one day like this happened this, for, this was like for months 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 maybe even a year and then one day I went to his house and he gave me like half his record collection. What, he just, Target just gave he you gave half? gave me half his record collection. That's why I always talk about Target. Target is like, for me, that's like one, one of the starting points wow. for whole everything. Because like, we're talking about when I was like 13. Like he didn't have to do that. And I was just pestering him, knocking on his door. And then I was just this you. And he like took me in and he was cool. And records ain't cheap. Nah, not then. But but Target was like in drum and bass. He was like in jungle. Him and Trend, rest in peace. Like they, you know what I'm saying they 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 had their thing going on. They made some of the best jungle tunes that I that that, that I loved. Him, Shy FX, a bunch of them. Like, I'm a massive jungle jungle fan. Like like, so it started like that. Then I started making no. St- we started DJ. I started DJing and I was storming. R.I.P. Storming. Rest I was storming's storming. DJ. Yeah. So wow. we used to like. In my house, there'll be a bunch of us. I'll be DJ and a bunch of MCs. Um, <laughs> bad. One of, one of the MCs was Kai's from SN1. <laughs> Swear down. Yeah, because Kai, wow. Kai's was a close friends with my boy Ada. I was, I was DJ at the time, so he came with him. Um, Kai's had a little spell where he lived in East. I went to school there. So Kai's, I was the one who got Kai's to rap. I said to him, yo, you should spit, you should spit. Kaz was a jungle MC first. Mad. So, I, yeah, I, that's yeah. something I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I was saying. So wow. he's like, he, he reminded me of that when I done the tune with gigs. He reminded me of the old Torian, remember? It's like one of them things that's happened so long ago. So anyway, then when I when I, then I started MCing myself as well to jungle. Then when I started going pirate radio, obviously the sound was more, it was kind of more garage at that time. Mm. Then I started making my own beats. like say, And I think I made my own beats initially because I didn't, I didn't know where to go and get beats from anyone else. So it wasn't just so that I think oh, no, I'm not really feeling what that man are doing or nothing. Yeah, it's like, just well, like that. No. So because it wasn't a thing. If you was to, if you wanted to get a beat, it, it was it, you couldn't just go because obviously social media wasn't a thing, right? So you would have to maybe no. MySpace. Not MySpace wasn't. No, that was even that. before MySpace. Was before yeah, MySpace. It was not, it, everything was in person them days. So literally, you would have to see a producer somewhere, maybe at a record shop. Them on times the you didn't even know what anyone looked like. Of course, because P- pirate radio, radio pirate was radio. no face. Yeah. Like it wasn't that. Just what you sat there, listened. You sat there and just listened. Like mm. kids these days, like it, yeah, it, it makes yeah. me think. Imagine how, if like a lot of the young MCs and rappers now, they didn't have that that visibility. Right. Like they literally had to listen to a radio and try and maybe find out a, a rave that that producer or rapper was at to try and network. It's crazy. I couldn't even picture it. Like. I, I was just, I guess I was fortunate in a way that I just managed to get myself on Pirate Radio because mm. I'm from an area where you had the Rinse FMs or Dejas and and then and then it was the same for, like I said, when you go across to the to another ends because that was a thing then, like to go to another area, you know what I'm saying? Like unless you're going for a rave or something, we're going to other Pirate stations. So I'd go to Heat FM. At the time, I didn't know Skepta and JME and all that, or Frisco, but we were on the same radio station because I followed um, Rough Squad, they were there. Or over in Brixton, I did a set with RA and uh, them, them man from yeah. when early. Ro- Roadside Jeez. Yeah, from yeah. like when I was, you know what I mean, going up there, didn't didn't really know them. Yes. And just, but we're there on the set together. That's, that's how connected and deep this thing is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So e- everyone's got a kind of link from early so it's, even though we're celebrating 20, 20 years of my album and all that for me it's 20 years like plus of like the culture these are all people Kano all these people these are all people that are, like grew up around from young like in sweaty mad little setups doing this thing paying 20 pounds to be heard like and youth clubs and stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah when you when I think about your sound in 2003 what did you call your music but by, by then it was already being called Graham. Okay. So, so so someone somewhere called it Graham. And 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 initially, did you go along with that, or was you? I thought it was a bit rude, that? personally. Like, what do you mean, Graham? But then it made sense. Like, okay, it's Grammy sounding. It was like, it was, so I just kind of just ran with it. When, and then and then Wiley named his Esky. Mm. Even like what we consider as Graham albums, they're not fully Graham <laughs> albums, and I don't think the artists themselves would put that project or body of work. 
that people perceive as grand projects as a grand project. You don't. I don't think anyone wakes up and says, "I'm going to make a grand album for all the grand purists to call it a grand album." You just make. I think music. later on, but uh, with with well, like myself, you could argue this like the first, just well, grand album. Yeah. So, but because I was like I said right at the beginning experimenting, I didn't have the same like. Uh, I wasn't trying to prove that. Mm. I was just trying to make the biggest, best album I could at the time and just, just put everything into it. Got you, got you. Quickly, this iconic picture here. Yes, man. I, want, I got a few questions. Go on. The photographer behind this. Who shot this iconic picture for your album? I thought it was Ben Drury. Okay. And I thought, did Dean Chalkley actually take it? And, and, and in One terms of the crea- creative direction, See this image when you mm-hmm. think about just staple house images. Them crep, bruv. I wish I would have kept them, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's. <laughs> they need to re release them. They actually do. They need to bring them back out again, man. So everything about this image. Mm. Did you pick the whole outfit, the whole drop? Is this led by you? Yeah, because that would have been. That would have been after my first trip to LA. Mm. So the first time I left England, I'm sure it was to go to LA. And I just went mad, bought a bunch of everything. So and I don't I don't know if that tracksuit was around them times. I know I definitely didn't get them trainers here. So that, that was definitely stateside. Oh. Yeah, I think I got that all in LA. Um, and I just yeah, it was just I, I wore a bunch of different outfits that day, and and I took a bunch of different pictures as well. That's the one they went with. And it's controversial. I've definitely been been eating dinner somewhere. A man has definitely come up to me. He's like, yo, what was going on? Then? Why are you going for the devil team? For the whole... like, yeah, like, and it's <laughs> like, <laughs> trying to explain to people that it's like, oh, it's not really not. And sometimes you just leave them with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let them have their assumptions. Yeah. Because when I think about, again, fashion and how it's come full circle, right. you would have taken this picture, what, 0203? Or... It's 02, yeah. 02, yeah? Yeah. 2023. It's still the thing. This is... This I still wear that. <laughs> I still no, but, wear that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I dress like this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That was that was the hood uniform, man. And when you think about how an image like this, mm-hmm. when I see like younger like kids who wouldn't have been born when you've taken this picture, like the, wearing this. The gloves. Because you see Drake, gloves, Drake with the, them same gloves years later, you know what I mean? Like this for me is an iconic image. That's that's London. That's like that's because you don't. I never saw anyone dress like that in America or anywhere else. Never. Like, no. Yeah, because they weren't even trying to like rock the 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 their or sweatsuits or, or track suits like the way we were. Nah. And this is just like so iconic, man. I, I just wanted to just touch base on this image. So yes, again, twenty years of hip hop. No, fifty years of hip hop. Twenty years of boy in the corner. Yes, sir. What an iconic project, and there will be more content speaking about this project because obviously I've got my fair share of stories boy in the corner but if there's one thing that you've taken from this whole process of being here whether it be just celebrating 20 years of of this album or maybe taking yourself back to when you first built this project what has been like the most impactful moment throughout this whole process from day one of making Boy in the Corner to like now celebrating it. Like, do you sometimes just take take yourself out of this and just pinch yourself and be like, bro, like, um, like we're celebrating an album. Cause the reason why I say that, not many people get celebrated for their bodies of work, 100%. especially 20 years later. Mm. So what has been like the most iconic moment for you that you take from all of this? It, there's been a bunch, man. But like, recently I'd say the, the, the O2 show, like the twenty years that celebration, crazy. that that was crazy, and just to have all those people there, and just the setup was so mad, wicked. I'm doing more actually. I'm doing um, three more in October. I'm doing Newcastle, Cardiff, and um, Nottingham. Mm. So you can't come down for that, everybody. But oh. that that one, that one, that I, I felt that in my heart, and I could see how much it meant to people, and all that that was yeah. wicked. But just in general, to just even be here, like, just, it might hit me more in the years time. Like, rah, man, we really celebrated that like twenty years because yeah. it, it doesn't feel that long ago, but I appreciate it. And I said, just cultural wise, when, when I think about it, I think about like those moments you're talking about back in the day on the estates and then like just, just me bopping from ends to ends and all the different shubses, all the different raves, like, yeah. I don't know, 
it would have been Lefez ran your way. Yeah. Or Okay Road would have been Caesars. Lefez, you know what I'm saying? The spots. Yeah, wow. Like, like, if anyone knows what I'm and talking the about. Thing is, you're taking it there. You're, you're going taking into the it there. Like, from, we were, that's what it like. was. Like, it's that. <laughs> but I love that because when, when I, when I hear, we always watch American hip hop and like their history and everything. But then, say like, I, I might be with Bun B and we're going to a, a club. He's got a club appearance and we get, like, it's in like, one mad part of Florida or something just on the outskirts in his hood but then I'm in there and I'm like yo and I can explain to him yo this reminds me of like Palace Pavilion mm. or Florida. so man could relate but I've got my own thing you know what I mean my own culture my own like to, thing to compare it to and know that yeah I, I come from here like, this is this is our thing like, yeah, so yeah. I love that and that's why I love like obviously being in a position that I am now that's why when we celebrate moments like this yeah we're celebrating hip hop but for me I wasn't around when, you know, Biggie and Pac and, well, you know what I'm saying? I would have been like two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when facts, yeah. they were putting out, like, my influences are, you know, people like yourself and, and, and obviously just UK, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, I, and when I'm growing up listening to the radio, we're not getting that much UK influence on the radio, right? Unless it's pirate. So now I, it comes full circle. We're here now. I always think it's important to just showcase UK and, and where that's coming from and everything. So, um, yeah, Dizzy, thank you so much for this. By the way, yeah. this whole uh, this whole setup has been legendary. Um, and I just want everyone to know that this has been an iconic moment. 50 years of hip-hop on the BBC. One extra rap show, myself, Kenny Allstar, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., of course. Dizzy, thank you. You got any final messages for the people? Yo, I love you. Keep loving your boy. I'm going to be out here active forever. Your kids kids, kids are going to know me. Know that. And as long as I'm on the radio, Cheer. they're going to know. Trust. Trust me. Big up, Dizzy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man.